internet reception with your machine? Well, in some sense, yes. The technology of the unification of all forces includes the electromagnetic force. But we will also answer some of the deepest questions of space and time. Is time travel possible? Is it possible to bend space into a pretzel? What happened before the Big Bang? What happened before Genesis chapter 1, verse 1? What does it all mean? These are the questions that we hope to answer with the Large Hadron Collider. For example, I recently wrote a book, Physics of the Impossible. And I'm proud to announce today that I just found out just a few days ago that the book, Physics of the Impossible, has now been on the New York Times bestseller list for four weeks running. Who would have thought a book with the word physics in it? Number 12 in the United States right now. It's also the number one science book in the country. So in that book, I do address the question of time travel. Is it possible to relive the past? Is it possible to change the past? Well, let me tell you a short story. If you think you're so smart, figure this one out. We physicists actually study this story. Listen carefully. The year is 1945. It is a dark and stormy night. A drifter comes in from the darkness carrying a baby girl inside a basket that he leaves at an orphanage. Well, the nuns pick up this baby girl the next day. They don't know what else to call her, so they call her Jane. And Jane grows up wondering, who is my mother, my father, my sister, my brother? I was left as a foundling on the doorstep. And then when Jane is 19 years of age, she falls in love. A handsome drifter comes into her life, but it was not meant to be. They quarrel, and the boyfriend stomps off into the darkness, never to be seen again. But it's a very sad story. Jane finds out she's pregnant. She's rushed to the hospital nine months later, delivers a beautiful baby girl. But that very same night, somebody breaks open the window of the hospital and kidnaps Jane's precious baby girl. And it's even worse than this. The doctors find out she's bleeding, she's dying. To save Jane's life, the doctors perform an emergency operation and change Jane into Jim. Well, Jim wakes up the next day saying, oh my God, I was left as a foundling, raised by nuns, fell in love, got pregnant, somebody steals my baby, and now I'm not even Jane anymore. Well, Jim gets into barroom fistfights anytime someone says, hey Jim, where did you come from anyway? Who was your mother, your father, your brother, your sister? Well, one day, Jim is now stone drunk on the bottom of a bar, again. But this time, the bartender comes up to Jim and says, wake up, Jim, wake up. You know, I'm really a time traveler. I'm not really a bartender. Come into my machine and let us find out who is Jane slash Jim. So they go back into the past, way back into the past. And so poor Jim doesn't know where he is, but then, he meets this beautiful 19-year-old girl, and it's love at first sight. But you know, it was not meant to be. They quarrel, and Jim stomps off into the darkness. But then Jim later finds out his girlfriend's pregnant. And Jim says, oh my God, I don't want history to repeat itself. I want to make sure that my baby gets the best education possible. So Jim goes to the hospital, breaks open the window, steals his own precious baby girl, and goes back into the time machine. Back, back, way back, until it is 1945. It is a dark and stormy night. Jim comes in from the darkness, carrying his precious baby girl that he drops off at an orphanage in a basket. Well, the nuns pick up the baby girl the next day. They don't know what else to call her, so they call her Jane. And Jane grows up wondering, who is my mother, my father? My brother, my sister. Well, Jim, meanwhile, finally gets it together. And he says, I'm going to make something of my life. I don't want to be a drunk all my life. So he joins the Time Travelers Corps and has many heroic feats in the annals of time. Now, Jim is an old man. He's an old man now. And he's about to retire. But he asks for permission for one last mission in time. And that is to put on a mustache, put on some wig, 
and impersonate a bartender to meet a certain barroom drunk who gets into fistfights anytime someone asks him, who are you, Jim? Where'd you come from? Who is your mother, your father? Now, for 10 points, who can tell me? Who is Jane's mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandfather, granddaughter, great-great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-great-granddaughter? Jane. She's a family tree unto herself. Can you imagine a family get together one day and they get into a food fight and someone says, you did this to me. No, you did that to yourself. Well, think about it, because we do. We physicists are now grappling with the ultimate question of space and time itself. And now let me end on one story. I spoke at the Einstein Centennial, and my favorite Einstein story is this. When Einstein was an old man, he was tired of giving the same talk over and over again. So one day his chauffeur came up to him and said, Professor Einstein, I may look like a chauffeur, but I'm a part-time actor. And I've heard your, your talk so many times, I've memorized it. I can give your talk. So why don't we switch places? And I will be the great Einstein, and you can take a break and be my chauffeur. Well, Einstein loved a good joke. So they switched places. The chauffeur put on a mustache, put on some wigs, and then he became the great Einstein, giving talks. Well, this went very well. Until one day, somebody in the back, a mathematician, asked a very difficult question. And Einstein thought, oh, the joke is up. But then, but then the chauffeur said, that question is so elementary that even my chauffeur here can answer it for you. <laughs> Thank you very much.